the number one determining factor of a man's success is who he chooses as a wife. Let's take a look at this. Are you rescuing someone? Are you the type of man who is the Captain save a hoe for lack of a better term, <laughs> trying to rescue her from, because she's broken, she's damaged, and, and she is codependent on you, and it feels good in that moment while you're dating her, so next thing you know, you put a ring on it, and then she is chaotic. I remember being part of that Indian tribe, save, save a hoe. Trying to save it. And mm -hmm. by, the, by, by, by the by the same thing can go for, for women too. Absolutely, yes. Vice versa. Oh, I've like, saved, I, I I've saved the whole, yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've Captain saved. Captain Save a Bum. I, you know. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bum. Absolutely. Oof, we're having church on a Wednesday. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> praise God. Amen, hallelujah. Huh? <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and by the way, a great reference for men and women to read, if you're looking for a set of values and principles to abide by, look at Proverbs 31 in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And who wrote Proverbs 31? King Solomon. Who's King Solomon? The son of David. You know the guy that, that slayed Goliath? Mm -hmm. His son is Solomon, who's considered the wisest, and who is the wisest and richest king who ever lived. He was richest and wisest king. Not just rich. And wisest king who ever lived. And he said, eh, I've had thousands of wives. I've had thousands of concubines. I, by the way, Ecclesiastes, the next book after that, regretful type of King Solomon. And even he says, by the way, guys, sons, look for this woman. Proverbs 31, okay? Look for her. And so, and, and by the way, Erica, just listening to you, you have a lot of those characteristics. Just want to let you know. Oh, okay? You, so uh, any, any man that will have to stumble across you will be very fortunate. Um, you have a lot of those qualities. Oh gosh, 1,000%. Um, uh, next one. A woman says that men don't need women and women don't need men. Let's take a look. Men don't need women. Women need men. Women do need men. men could survive without women. If all the women disappeared tomorrow, men would be fine outside of reproduction. If tomorrow they made artificial wombs, what would they need a woman for? Who's a better companion, men or women? So men built the world. All the hard jobs are done by men. Mm -hmm. If men disappear tomorrow, the society would collapse. Men built sure. the world that we complain about. Men can be alone. Women can't. Women are social beings. We need attention. And men, men don't. You don't see women going out to the woods and just roughing it. That's a man thing. <laughs> Who's camping and fishing? It's not us. Erica? <laughs> Erica, your thoughts. Ms. Independent? I'm a deer in headlights yes. right now. <laughs> I'm like, girl, what? Um, I mean, yes, we need men. You guys provide so much value. Yes. But, I mean, I don't think the world would be a better place without women. I mean, we're, we, we're multipliers, we're nurturers. You know, we just, a few minutes ago, just talked about, like, having a good woman in your life, a good wife can, I mean, Matt, like, you could speak to that. I mm -hmm. don't, I personally don't know your wife, but I'm sure that life is better with her. I, yeah. I mean, I could just, the way you talk about her, you know, like, she's a blessing in your life, yeah. right? Amen. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I can't agree with her. I, I don't agree with her on that. I mean, interesting. Yeah. Uh, and which and which part? Just really any of it. I just think um, I think men do need women, and I think women need. Uh, I mean, the, sometimes the, women need. You, you men. just touched on two things. You said women you, women are needed because women are multipliers and women are nurturers. Yes. But as she said, what if? Artificial wombs were created. That's one. Yeah. And even nowadays, there, there is a lot of science backing yeah. up that there's a lot of men out there yeah. who are extremely feminine. doesn't mean that they're gay. It okay. just means that they're feminine. Okay. So the nurturing part will actually come from yeah. uh, those uh, feminine, feminine men. So that will completely cancel yeah. out the ideology no, it's that a no women for are me. needed for that. It's a solid no for me. It's mm -hmm. a hard no for me. Um, it just, uh, I don't believe that a man could Why? provide what a woman does. In, in we're just innately... Uh, but, but you're, like but, I said, you're not, you're, not, you're not even you're not even giving the the, the, the uh, uh, actual statements. You're just saying the two things that she actually canceled out. So what can okay. a, what can a woman provide that a man can do on his own that he's not already doing? What from from your perspective? Okay, what can a man provide no, we, that we, a no, woman no, no, can't? No, you're, no, you're, you're saying you're saying that women are needed because of women provide X Y Z. I'm just saying I'm just saying like a man by himself can't can't what can't do. Things the way a woman can do them. She can't. Ha a man can't handle things the way that. When it comes down to running a society, can. or are you, are you talking about the minimal, the minimal things at home? I feel like I would have to watch the video again because oh. I really, yeah, I like that was my first time watching it. But I just, I just, I don't agree with what she's saying. I whole like overall, I just don't think that. Well, well tell me, tell me what you're. 
I just, I literally just canceled out that they, the, the fact that you said women are. I'm going based off of two things you said. Okay. Women are multipliers, mm -hmm. and women are naturally nurturers. Mm -hmm. Okay, she just spoke on what if artificial wombs were created, mm -hmm. then men, uh, then women would be needed, and then again you went to the idea of nurturers. Then I said I can combat that with science. There's a lot of studies that there's a lot of men out there who have a lot of feminine characteristics, which will also lead them into being more nurturing. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they're gay. It just means that they're a lot more feminine. Okay. So can men not? have that sense of nurturing if they have more of feminine characteristics. Again, not saying that they're trans XYZ or whatever the case may be along those lines. Just because you have more feminine characteristics does mm -hmm. not mean you're gay. It just means that you have more feminine characteristics and that's okay. the way you were completely wired. Okay. So if we're going based off of what she, what she said, right, canceling mm -hmm. out the idea of the, uh, uh, of the nurturers and the multipliers, mm -hmm. what is the dividing factor among men and women when it comes down to men can actually mm -hmm. live without women or not in this physical earth? Matt, what do you think? Yeah, well, listen, I, uh, there's nothing about me that'll ever say, Milton, let me cry on your shoulder. You're such a great nurturer. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I just feel weird about that, bro. Even, <laughs> let's bring our artificial woman to this. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've been raised by some very, very strong women in my mm -hmm. life. Yeah. I don't have grandparents. Never raised by my grandparents. Mm -hmm. My aunties are strong. My mothers are strong. Yeah. But at the same time, too, there's something about just being with other men. I just want to go out hunt and fish, and I want to go out there and, and get after mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But when I'm done with that, I'm done with my boys, I kind of want to go home to my yeah. woman's side. There's mm -hmm. a much different energy in the room when it's just men, men being amongst men, versus a woman. For example, a bunch of group of men, you mm -hmm. bring one or two women in there. The dynamic Completely drastically changes. changes. Yep. Drastically changes. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there's, there's a... I, listen... I believe God created men and women to have equal but different roles. Okay. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. And then how we go about that, guess what? We got a Bible to use as a life manual to figure that shit out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, by the way, this, that's, that, that we can continue with this uh, conversation for a mm -hmm. few, but we're short on time. Next, next uh, clip here, 90% of uh, divorces can be predicted by this. Okay, let's take a look. 90% of divorces can be predicted by this. It's when your partner is trying to connect and you reject them. What I mean by this is, say for example, your partner comes home from work and is like, oh, I'm so tired. And you turn around and say, why are you tired? What have you done all day? That creates distance. Interesting point there. I, by the way, I'm 100% guilty of that. Many times in my, in my marriage. Because I watch different shows than she does. And I'm like, why are you watching this freaking drama? Blah, 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 where I should be saying... Hey, what makes you want to watch this? Ah, I learned something today. Mm. You know, because if that's the way of a woman's perspective, and then she gets mad at me, okay, we just go away. I'll watch my shows, you watch your shows. And they see no we're we're apart. Mm. So I learned something today. Babe, I'm gonna let's go watch some Korean dramas together. <laughs> yeah. Erica, what's your thoughts? No, I I completely agree. Yeah, I mean it's a I think your insight is really valuable because I mean, like, we're not married, right? And so that was a really good example of how things just start to slowly how does right? erica feel rejected how do i feel from rejected? your perspective someone who's dating you you brought something up how do you feel rejected mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think it goes along with to piggyback off of what was said in the video where you don't feel seen or you don't feel heard you know you just feel like the person doesn't care and that leads to you feeling like the person doesn't value you um you're not a priority and yeah i can see how it starts to drift yeah absolutely yeah and, yeah. and, and unless there's a circle back you're just gonna get Exactly. Get wider, Absolutely. Wider, wider. Yes. Milton, what's your thoughts on this, bro? Uh, I think it goes it goes very well with the uh, the concept of uh, your five love languages. I think everyone gives love differently, and everyone receives love very mm -hmm. differently. And I think it's really based off of the way you were given the love growing up, and then the languages you adapt uh, adopted as you grew older. And you know, if, especially if you're you've worked on yourself and you're mindful of what you want and what you don't want in your life, mm -hmm. you know, what you reject, what you accept into your life. Um, I think if your love languages aren't being met as man or woman, I think that feeling or the sensation of not being not being loved or feeling hurt, as Erica said, I think that's going to creep up on you very, very fast. And you guys can have a successful marriage when it comes down to raising kids. You guys can have a successful business. You guys can be just uh, the, the idolized um, uh, couple. But if both of you guys aren't, uh, your needs aren't being met and your love language isn't being spoken from your partner and you're not communicating that, I think one day or another, your partner might come up to you and say, hey, babe, I think you know, I'm, I'm ready to get the divorce because I, I, I haven't felt love from you in the last 20 years. Yep. Yeah. So. And like, who are you? Yes. You know, you've been rejecting each other for the last 20 years. Yeah. And then the way you stay together is because of the kids. Mm. And then, you know, what a sad pressure to put on the kids. And then the kids are out. And now, 
you got to deal with each other again. You're like, who are you? Even more so. So if you like that clip, please watch this one right here. If you want to see the full podcast, click right here.